highlight some of the function buttons that can be applied to different decorative stitches. So depending on what stitch you have, you may have certain functions on or not available to you at all. When we go to I for information, you'll see that for a straight stitch, we have the ones that are active here, including a few more you can't see until you scroll down a little bit further. So right here is a locking stitch, so at any given time you can have some extra stitches for locking it. When you have a decorative stitch, I'm going to switch over to just something a little bit more obvious here and touch our eye for information. You have how many times you want that stitch to appear. When you have, so it's called pattern repeat. So right now it just says I want it one time, but let's say we needed two flowers and then we need it to stop. You don't have to count two flowers or see when to push your stop button. You can actually just go ahead, tell the machine, I need two flowers and then it will do the rest for you. You can practically just step on the foot control and daydream for a minute while they finish stitching out. This will go all the way up to nine, which means that if you keep touching it, you're going to find it'll take a while before you get all the way back to nothing, as in zero. Just keep sewing a whole row. So if you're ever in here and you can, you're up to three and you're like, I don't need this, just push clear because I'll clear it out too. You can mirror image it left to right. And this won't show because it's symmetrical, but the flip of up to down, it will show a lot more if I go to a decorative stitch, like our little turtle here. He will look like a different turtle, depending if we go up left to right or up and down. So it'll sew from head to tail versus tail to head if I, um, north and south mirror image there. And we can also lengthen him out. So if we wanted to spread him out, what's nice is it keeps the density of the stitches still the same, but we can make said turtle a little bit more longer, or if we have a little bit smaller version of him, we can shorten him up. So we can stretch out the stitch, but without actually having the stitches spread apart. So once again, if we go here, we'll go back to I for information. Uh, we'll clear out anything that we've done to him, but that's like pattern extend in that direction. Sometimes when you are stitching, if you just need to stitch backwards, you don't want to actually turn the fabric around. I don't know if you'd want to stitch turtles backwards, but this is your continuous reverse, meaning when you are sewing a straight stitch, so we'll just go back to our practical stitches, touch one, and that is like you holding your reverse button down without you having to hold the button. Come in here, touch the continuous reverse, and that will work here. Now let me pick another stitch. Uh, that's kind of the honeycomb stitch, and we definitely don't need it going away from us, so we'll turn the continuous button off. Now one of the things is when you sew a decorative stitch, when you're done, if you don't want to have just locking stitches and you want it to backtrack a little bit, you want it to sew backwards, but you want it to actually go in the exact same holes that it previously stitched in, that's what this is for. So when you sew, it will back, it will sew all the way down, and then when you touch it, it will back up in those same needle holes. It's kind of cool how that actually works. All right, so we'll turn that off. Uh, scrolling down a little bit more, this is balance. You know, sometimes when you're sewing on uh, some fabric that's not ideal, your stitch is going to look like not all the way, maybe it's a little spread out. This is usually what happens is when you have fabric with a nap or there's corduroy, so there's lots of little divots in it. When you stitch, your stitch doesn't come back and connect. So what you do is you can go into the balance area and you adjust, here's how this works. You adjust this picture to match the problem on your fabric. By doing that, and you can, I'm just using the little uh, stitch length knob, or you can go here, plus minus, plus minus, and get it to work. So if it's really spread out, what's going to happen is when you sew, it will accommodate this issue and turn it back to the regular stitch. Now notice what else you have here just by turning this. Look at that. Does that look like a cool stitch? Now, if I turn it here, what it'll do is actually go the opposite way. So <laughs> you actually have to kind of manipulate in the reverse if you want that to actually look like something totally different when you start to stitch out your stitches. So um, I'm going to just touch this yellow box that will turn it back to zero since we don't need to be doing anything. And see how we've gotten into these different little levels? If I just come back to the eye, I go back one level. The next thing is actually a 
Um, <laughs> that's funny, that's what the stitch looks like. It is a long stitch. Um, it's it's gonna stitch every other stitch. Now, not skipping stitches, it's stitching every other one. So it's gonna look like a stitch hop, stitch hop, stitch hop. And really with the stitch that we just had on screen, it turned it into a blanket stitch. How cool is that? I'm gonna have to try a different one. All right, just something else, just random here. We're gonna go into I for information. Oh can't do that one. All right, so maybe not all functions <laughs> can we do with the long stitch. Oh, that's cool. Kind of takes out part of the stitch. See how there's eliminates every other stitch and we have totally new stitches. So when I tell you to stitch out all your decorative stitches, you now need to go back and take every other stitch out with the long stitch function and stitch them because now we just doubled all the stitches that we have in our machine. Like I said, not all of them, but here just for fun, let's just pick a random decorative stitch and ha. Huh, well, that's different. Okay, I love the fact that when I touch things, it actually shows me what I get. Okay, so not all the stitches are gonna look like fabulous, but, okay, now, I got, now I'm curious here. Okay, that doesn't look good. All right, but who knows? Maybe it looks great in variegated thread stitched out on your fabric, so I shouldn't judge before I actually stitch it. But all in all, I'm not thinking that's gonna be the greatest thing. Uh, ooh, look, hexagons, huh? All right, so um, as you can see, no matter how many years you use a machine, you will always learn something new with this. Um, also in the functions down here, let's say we wanna save that as the function we always uh, want on with this, I can save it. Now that's the default setting of this stitch number 607. I could even save it in my personal program for later because maybe I'm gonna make folder for my crazy stitches that I experienced that I actually kinda like uh, along the way. So you definitely have a way to customize this machine for exactly the way you, you sew here. You also notice a record button. Now on a straight stitch, this will let us actually sew a length. You can sew on your fabric. And then when you touch the reverse button, it will re record the length of total sewing stitches. So if you sewed out like an inch and a half, it will now repeat that same amount. It's like memorizing a, a, a group of stitches. And so if you need to sew the same little strap on 50 items and it, the length is this long, you can just pre-program in how many stitches and then just put it in to start, sew till it finishes, put the next thing in, sew till it finishes, and you can set the length for what you need. So when you record it, set, touch the reverse button, and then actually um, you'll just be ready to stitch over and over and over. It's pretty cool. Um, auto, you can kind of set that for any length. So if you know the length that you want it to stitch at, you can do that, and then when you're done, you can turn it turn it off there. So it's pretty cool. So a few other functions, I'm gonna kinda of jump over here on this side of the machine, we'll go back to a straight stitch that we use a lot. You've got your tension adjustment here, so if you're working with different threads in your needle or bobbin, we can actually adjust that up or down depending on what we need the result to be fixed with. And I'm gonna actually uh, clear that out so it doesn't remain. Um, which foot to use, but the here, pressure. A lot of times the pressure can be changed, especially on your, if you're working on a on a stretchy fabric, comes out kind of wavy. You can actually take the pressure of the foot and drop it down. 50, 50 is normal, so if we just drop it down just to a random 30 or 25 or 23, this will make it so the foot doesn't sit so heavily on your fabric, almost like skims or hovers over the fabric. You still get the feeding that you're looking for, but without the pressure that's gonna stretch your fabric out and make it not work for what you're looking with. A clear will clear that out as well. So those are some of the functions that I use all the time. But again, like for example, when we go into buttonholes, which we'll do in the buttonhole video, the functions over here are gonna be totally different. So we're gonna keep adding, we'll do videos a little bit more specifically on some of these other options as they become available, but that's a quick little overview on what and how we can manipulate the stitches in the eye for information area.